r slash short scary stories posted by reddit user that other dude 1817 choose your death at gmail.com there's an email address that lets you decide how you want to die nobody knows how it works nobody knows why it's there but it's there it works simply all you have to do is send how you wish to die and your wish will be granted within five days you don't need to be specific you don't need to put in anything extra you don't even need to put in your info they know and once you send it there's no turning back did you wish to die from a stabbing? did you wish to die a hero? did you wish to die from something inappropriate? your wish will be granted People die in their own beds from a hooded figure stabbing them to death. People die saving others from fires. People die doing something inappropriate. People die. I want to die too. I desperately want it to end. Life is impossible for me to continue to go through. And I don't want to live anymore. But I'm too much of a coward for suicide. So I went for the better option. I didn't want to die painfully, and I didn't want anyone to mourn over my death. All I wanted was to leave the world peacefully, and let everyone else who used to be in my life live out their wondrous lives. So I raised my fingers over the keyboard and typed, I want to die painlessly, and not to have anyone weep over my death. One day passed and I was still alive. Two days passed and I was still alive. Three days passed, and I was still alive. Four days passed, and I was still alive. The fifth day was the day of a party. I came over to my brother's house, along with most of my family. Today was the day of his party. Everyone else was singing and laughing, and yet, I was sitting in the corner, on my phone, I should have known it was a scam. I should have known it was fake. I just want to die painlessly, not have anyone suffer over me. So why wouldn't it happen? Why wouldn't I die? Then I got the notification, and I went pale, realizing my wish had come true. You don't need to put any info in your email. You don't need to put any extra details in the email. You don't need to be specific with your email. But God, I wish I was more specific. I looked up at my family, enjoying themselves, completely unaware of what was about to hit them, as the words, ballistic missile, burned into my mind. Our next story is entitled, Death Clock. Cause of death, an attack. Time of death, two days, 17 hours, 28 minutes, and 29 seconds. I stared at the clock in confusion. It was a tiny digital clock that looked like it was made of wood. There were words carved into one side of the wood, only next to the cursive, time of death. It was the kind of watch you would find on a cheap watch or alarm. But this wasn't a clock. It was a countdown. Two days, 17 hours, 26 minutes and 52 seconds. It was a threat. I looked down the street to see who put the clock on my porch. But nobody was there. No people. No cars, nobody. I suddenly felt sick and hurried back into my room. Slamming the door behind me, I investigated the clock further, only to find there was no way to dismantle it. I could not stop it. Two days, nine hours, seven minutes and forty-four seconds. I couldn't stop thinking about the clock ever since then. I would be browsing the internet, and an attack would fill my mind. I would be watching TV, and an attack would fill my mind. I would be stress-eating and forget about the clock, and then an attack would fill my mind. 
One day, 23 hours, 57 minutes, and 57 seconds. I didn't get any sleep that night. Why would I? If I knew someone was going to attack me. The more I thought about it, the more sick I felt. The following morning, I tried going to the gym, only to realize how crowded it was. I already felt too many eyes on me. I ran so hard to get to the car I nearly puked. One day, zero hours, 59 minutes and two seconds. I boarded up the doors and windows. I knew it was extra, but the idea of someone breaking into my home and murdering me was too risky. I even tried destroying it, but it wouldn't break. It wouldn't even crack. Zero days, four hours, 28 minutes, and one second. I locked myself in the room. I'm holding a gun, still waiting for someone to break in. I'm waiting for someone to attack me. I'm waiting for someone to kill me. It's hurting me inside to know that it's coming so soon. I'm sweating so much. My chest burns, and it feels like I can't get comfortable anymore. Zero days, zero hours, zero minutes, and 19 seconds. This is it, I realized. This is how it ends. I closed my eyes and waited for the gunshot, or the stabbing pain of a knife, of anything from anyone. But the only pain, the only attack I felt was inside. As my clock began to beep, realization suddenly washed over me as I felt unbearable chest pain. Our next story is entitled, School Bus. I woke up far too early in the morning to a car honking outside my window. Groaning, I forced myself out of bed and staggering to the window to see whatever the hell was making so much noise. It wasn't a car, it was a bus, a school bus to be specific. I remembered. Today was September, and everyone was going back to school. I guess my neighbor had kids who he was taking to school, because the bus was right outside his house. But if it was going to be this loud, this early, I was going to consider moving. I yawned, staring outside as my neighbor came out of the house, wearing his bathrobe. He was yelling at the bus for making a ruckus, it seemed, but no children were with him. What gives? I noticed that the bus stopped honking. My neighbor noticed it wasn't getting a response and came up closer to the bus, screaming vile language at the door. The window to the door, no. The windows in general were a murky black, making it impossible to see inside. And as I looked carefully, it dawned on me that the bus didn't have any license plates. As the neighbor kicked the door with one last yell, the door slammed open with a bang. Children rushed out of the bus, but they didn't look like children. Their eyes were nothing but black circle on their deformed faces. Their bodies were contorted and insect-like. There were a lot of them, far too many for one bus. I watched in horror as the children flooded out of the bus enough of them to entirely take up the entire street. They surrounded my neighbor and grabbed him with their awful, spinally hands. My neighbor was able to make a few get away from him, but there were too many for him to fight off. The children packed around him, surrounding him, and pulling him into the crowd, swallowing him up. And then, the creatures dragged him back onto the bus, and the door slammed shut leaving no trace of the children or the neighbor. The bus hesitated for a second and then slowly drove forward to my house. It stopped in front of the yard and started honking at an inhumane speed and the doors were already cracking back open. Our final story of the night is entitled Alone. I am alone. I don't have any friends. I don't have any family members who care about me. 
I don't even have a love interest. I'm just a loner. That one person you see walk past you, that you just ignore, because you'll know you'll never see them again. Everyone in my life is like that. Everybody ignores me and I'm alone. I try to make friends, but none of them like me. They ignore me, tell me to go away. They insult me, and it hurts. It hurts knowing nobody likes me, and I am alone forever. I try to be kind to people. I hold doors open for others. I give money to the homeless people. One time, I even walked old lady home when she claimed to be lost. She looked so frail and innocent, and I knew she was alone too, so I helped her. She looked at me, smiled, and said that she would give me one wish. I didn't know what she meant. Maybe she was so alone that she had started to go crazy. But under my breath, I simply said, I wish I wasn't alone, and left. It first came when I was in bed. I woke up to the window opening, and it climbed into my room. Its eyes glowed white, and they were focused on me. It stood there all night. I know because I did not sleep. And it followed me. Every time I turned around, I would see it staring back at me. Its hideous mouth smiling wide. A grin full of razor sharp fangs. It followed me everywhere. Nobody else saw it. It followed me. Everywhere. I wanted people to like me. But not like this. I wanted someone I could truly talk to. Not a demon that watches everything I do. I want to get rid of it. I want to be alone again. But I can't. It just keeps following me. It follows me forever. And it made sure I was never alone. <laughs>